to my channel. This is Dom and an update on some of my painting projects and it's been terrain, terrain, terrain. Well, terrain and a few figures. There's been boxer, boxer, boxers. Um, my complete addiction to uh, the Boxer Rebellion figures and games continues. I had a first game, some of you may have seen the game I put up, Men Who Will Be King. Uh, I'm not sure the rules are really going to cut it. They're beer and, pe beer and pretzel. And while I don't like, you know, massively complicated rules, um, they just were very, very simple and almost too simple. But anyway, we'll, I'll persist. I, I, I still think there's something in it with um, sharp practice or um, I did pick up Culver or doing a, a new set of uh, rules specifically for the period and I picked those up so I will have a read through those and see what uh, what I make of them. But um, in the meantime, I've been working on some terrain. Um, I went to war bases and picked up some of their um, MDF um, 55 days in Peking range buildings. And I'm not a massive fan of, of MDF buildings. I, I, I'm not a modeler. I find it really frustrating to put them together. They always seem to be more complicated than they need to. But these ones are actually pretty good, um, pretty simple. Well, I'll show you one in a minute, which I did have a few issues with, but that was more user error than anything else. But um, uh, these ones from all bases were actually dead simple to do. Uh, this is the first building. Um, the roof comes off. You can, these doors and windows will open. I'm not going to do it now. Um, but they're, um, it's a nice bog standard building. I kept it fairly simple. I used my... Uh, uh, official Chinese um, interpreter. Um, my daughter Imogen has uh, been to China and I said, oh, what do the old buildings look like? And she said, well, the, the poor ones look really dirty and, and uh, yeah, run down, <laughs> like this one. And the, and the nice ones have, have got lots of red and, um, and gold and stuff, uh, was her word. So um, I haven't got much gold on them, I just realised, but I've, I've certainly put red on, on them. The posher buildings, but this one's the sort of more mainstream, the sort of more purse, um, cheaper, cheaper. It's a more um, poor person type building. Still quite a big building uh, in its own right. Um, but there you go. That's one done. And this is the other building. Uh, this is one actually I had real problems with, and it was more, as I say, user error. You can see I've a bit damaged around here, and this roof I really found really difficult to pull together. In the end, had to sort of almost make it up manually, um, but you know, it, it's a bit ramshackle. Should we say a posh building that's a bit ramshackle? All the roofs do come off like this, uh, which gives you access to the inside, which is good. Um, and um, this can be a nice big central feature on the table, um, characteristically Chinese in look, and. Um, yeah, not much more to say about it. Another MDF wall bases. So as well as the buildings, I also got hold of one of the wall bases bridges, Chinese bridges. Again, it's MDF. Um, again, fairly straightforward to put together. You can see the uh, framework there underneath. Um, and I um, used, this is uh, bird grit um, that I picked up from somewhere and I just stuck it down and then uh, Stuck it down again and then dry brushed it and da 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 da. Quite pleased with the effect. I'm not sure about it. I tried to sort of put a muddy effect on the inside of the bridge where mud would have been kicked up. Um, I'm not sure it kind of works. It just looks like I've been sloppy with a paintbrush. But anyway, um, yeah, you'll have seen this again on the battle report I put together because this building, uh, this bridge was in that battle report as was the first building. Um, but yeah, go. Another feature for the table. So the buildings keep coming. This is another MDF um, wall base building, Chinese building, double decker, obviously. Um, dead easy again to put together, really simple. Um, no, no, not a massive amount of detail on them, but you know, it's a feature for the table just to make it look suitably Chinesey. But I uh, enjoyed doing it again, kept it really simple. I'm actually what I did with this was I originally. Um, uh, undercoated it or primed it with a, a white primer. I usually use grey but this time I used white and then didn't actually um, paint the middle bit. 
again, I, I deliberately made some splodges where it sort of the idea was where the plasters sort of either um, come off or has uh, had a leak or something. I just used deck tan on it. Again, I'm not sure it necessarily works. It just looks like I've been sloppy again with the brushwork, but uh, which you know may have been the case as well, but um, wasn't originally the aim. But anyway, you know, it's fine. It, it's absolutely fine. Um, another building for the table. And then this one, um, I picked it up on Etsy um, some time ago, and it's a, a 3D printed. Um, I think it was supposed to be a temple or something like that. And I was a bit concerned that this might be too fantasy for a historical setting, but I put it up on the Plastic Crack podcast um, Facebook page and asked people what they thought, and most people seemed to think it was still in keeping with a Chinese monument. So there it is. It's been done. Um, bamboo, obviously, for the roof. These um, sort of lamp things weren't actually attached, but I've... Um, glued them on so that they were because uh, they, they came in with the with the kit but you didn't um, there was no sort of indication where they go but it just seemed appropriate to go like that so that's what I've done um, the gold on the gold leaf on the top of these just to make them look more plush and the dragons done in gold as well um, because gold and red is very much a Chinese thing so there you go uh, again you would have seen this on the table if you watch the uh, Men Who Will Be Kings battle report. And talking about 3D prints, um, this is another 3D print from Etsy. Um, it is a, I think it's supposed to be Japanese, um, but um, I'm gonna take liberties and use it in both Japanese based and Chinese based games. It's obviously an ornamental pond. Um, I've, um, uh, I actually did use the water-based glue, uh, water-based effect from Vallejo on it, but it seems to largely run away, or at least it's not really showing up as well as I like. So I may put another coat in there, but um, yeah, it, it's you know it's just a bit of fun, really. Um, dead simple. Um, the bridge comes separate, and I put some extra rocks in to make it look. Um, more sort of broken up rather than it would have been very flat and uniform with just the flat base um and uh sorry the pond if you see what i mean so yeah it'll do fine so i don't want you to think that i've just been doing terrain for the last week or so um i've also been working through some of the figures um i mentioned when i talked about the uh uh, you know how much I enjoyed men who um, 55 days in Peking as a film um, that in, when I grew up it, um, Saturday, Sunday mornings particularly they used to put on a lot of these classic uh, old war films um, which invariably featured something from uh, Northwest Passage or the uh, war in Afghanistan or uh, or of course the um, uh, 55 days at Peking being a great example and uh, the Bengal Lancers always seem to feature quite heavily in uh, well not in all of them but in a lot of them and so I wanted to have some Bengal Lancers uh, for my Boxer uh, Rebellion forces and um, these are Perry miniatures they're actually from their Afghan Wars uh, range but um, there's very very little difference if any between the, the two uh, the uniforms that they wore in those two conflicts um, there was an awful lot um, the predominant um, British inverted commas forces that fought in um, in China in uh, 1900 to 1901 1902 were actually Indian um, you also had some Gurkhas and uh, various others but basically from the Empire um, and Bengal Lancers uh, were definitely some of those so I thought that gives me the perfect excuse. So there you go, a uh, unit of Bengal Lancers uh, led by their British officer um, and um, really, really pleased with them. Came out very nicely. So I've also painted up some um, officers, mounted officers for the British force. Um, I think all three of these are artisans. Certainly the guy in the middle is. Um, the other two, I was a bit disappointed actually because they came sort of wearing big um, coats and whatnot, which, um, you know, okay, China gets pretty cold as well, but that was more for the um, Afghan wars up in the up in the mountains. Um, you needed something pretty warm to keep you uh, safe at night, and um, yeah, so they're from that from that range. So those thinking about it, those two are probably Perry figures. 
Uh, the guy in the middle is definitely an artisan. Um, again, for men who will be king rule set, you don't really need um, a, you know, mounted officers or CNCs. The, the rules don't work like that. Um, but if I do, and I suspect I will try other rule sets, I certainly will need them. So um, there, just nice to have. And they were quite fun to paint up and uh, quite pleased with the effects. So as well as all the terrain I've been building, um, I also picked up from war bases these Chinese um, carts. Um, one of the, I think this is the donkey cart, this one's the hand cart, and I forget what that one is. Um, but um, yeah, nice models. Again, MDF. Bit, I thought they'd be really fiddly to put together, and that one was fairly fiddly, but actually wasn't too bad. The, the most difficult bit was getting the... Um, uh, sort of roof of this one because it's uh, it's like cardboard and you have to wrap it around the framework there um, and it's one like all these things you're trying to hold it and glue it and stick it you know without sticking your fingers to it and everything else but I think it came out all right um, when I came to paint them I just kept it really really simple I just um, sprayed these with um, Halfords, um, Halfords do a range called Camouflage, don't know why cars need to camouflage but they, they do a range and these were um, Camo Brown, it was matte brown so I just sprayed it with that, gave it a good generous coat um, then when it was really dry I used Agrax Earthshade over the top just to sort of pick it up some of the, whatever grain there was because bear in mind these are wood anyway um, so there's a degree of, of grain in with them anyway uh, and also they put quite a lot of etchings into them which um, makes it show up quite nicely with a with a with a wash over the top and then I uh, very gently used um, deck tan to dry brush over the top just to sort of give it uh, sharpen the edges and bring out any kind of features on it but um, yeah, kind of fun kind of fun and then I continued with a few more boxes. So this is, um, these are all metal figures. I forget where they came from. I've been a little bit obsessed picking up um, boxer figures or Chinese um, warrior type figures that are suitable for the boxer period all over the place. In fact, I've just got a load more, which I'll show you in a minute, which came, um, they're supposed to be um, pirates. But anyway, I don't know where these ones came from. Um, but um, nice to paint up and good and a bit of variety just that's what I want I mean the trouble with the plastic box sets although there's an, um, a number of poses you can make with them they're still just the same five bodies um, so I, I kind of want to intersperse them with a few metals and a few other figures just to make them uh, a little bit different uh, plus I wanted some more standard bearers um, because as Leslie pointed out you need lots of standard bearers in this period and uh, that's what I aim to do so there you go some more boxes done so I've also been continuing down the uh, road with some of the coalition forces um, you've probably seen if you followed and in my videos the American Marines that I've already done uh, these are victorious uh, miniatures their range of um, well they're actually designed for 55 days in Peking um, but I did uh, I did I was given a well actually my daughter gave me a couple of packs of the Marines for Christmas last year and I also bought a couple of officers to go with them but I, I thought that there wasn't quite enough for a squad um, so I bought another pack of four just to sort of uh, allow me to field a 12-man infantry squad well marine squad in this case and a couple of big men to go with them so uh, that's what I've done um, it's always challenging isn't it I don't know whether you guys have the same problem but trying to um, match the color scheme that you did on older figures I mean these were only a couple of weeks ago but I still I think I actually mixed the light blue on the trousers that time um, but of course I couldn't quite wasn't quite sure what it matched up as and um, I think I did all right uh, this is one of the originals I think they, they go in perfectly well I won't know the difference um, but yeah there we go another four figures done and then talking about adding to the figures uh, these are another group of Kansu warriors um, I did uh, enough from the previous well so I said in the review I did of the um, uh, War Games Atlantic box is that there's actually 
limitations on how many arms with guns there are so you can only build a certain number of guys with uh, with 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 guns with rifles um and i wanted to do some kansu braves um so i did as many as i could in one box set and then i didn't do any in the second but in the third i just thought i'd add enough to make it into two 24 man groups um so this is the extra eight two four six eight yeah eight figures um Oh, just notice this guy. Oh no, something. It was just a funny shine on this on his uh, spear there. Anyway, um, so these guys will join those squads again. Uh, fairly a bit easier to mix these ones up because they were, you know, just fairly standard blues and and yellows on them. Um, this guy here, I've I'll dig out a standard and put it on him just to make sure that uh, keeps Leslie and others happy that there's plenty of flags. So I mentioned earlier that I also picked up a load of uh, random metal figures on eBay. Um, these are two, four, six of those. Um, not entirely sure. They look like they're probably something like War Games Foundry. The guy was adver advertising them as um, Chinese pirates, um, but I think they fit reasonably well as uh, boxers. Um, they're actually, really nice little figures. I'm not sure about the leggings. They have the kind of flare boss flares on, on the uh, on their leggings but I guess if they're um, pirates they would do uh, but I think they work quite well as um, as part of the boxer uh, formations and just add a bit of variety as I say the plastics are, are great but and they actually have quite a lot of different um, poses you can do with them but still there is a limit to how many you can uh, how many poses you can build especially when you're building three boxes of them um, so putting a few metals in there to spice it up is, is good. Uh, and at the front, you can probably see two more, um, tiger men. Um, I'm just, I'm still not quite sure how to play them in the game. Um, I suppose a lot will depend on the rule system I use. Um, I might just spur, intersperse them amongst the rest of the boxes and give the troops some kind of morale grade or even improve fight against um, people charging them, um, especially cavalry, because that was their their design. Um, they were sent forward to deal with cavalry, which seems a bizarre thing to do with men on, on foot, but apparently they had grappling hooks and various other things that they would... Uh, try and break up the formation of cavalry coming out the uh, main body of infantry and that was their main role in in life so there you go that's what i've been painting the last week or so um very fixated on the boxer stuff having a game just wet my appetite and i really wanted to get some terrain done and then i've just been continuing to work my way through figures um nearly at the end now actually i've got um a few more coalition troops to do um, quite a bit more boxes to do but they don't take long um, and a couple more buildings to do and then I think I'm pretty much there meanwhile I need to work through what I'm going to do rule system uh, men will who will be king I mentioned earlier was it was in, it was enjoyable as a sort of beer and pretzels game um, but I'm not sure it quite gave me this sophistication is the wrong word but the, the, the sort of complexity that I wanted I, don't get me wrong I don't want massively complicated games but I I do want it to be a little bit more than just random rolling dice kind of thing and and Men Who Will Be King was fun and it was, but it was more the fun of the group rather than necessarily the game and um, I, I'd like a bit of both so anyway I'll keep uh, I may may well progress with um, adapting um, um, sh sharp practice um, sharp practice for, um, for for the period because I think it would work pretty well. I just need to work through the stats, find out how to, you know, work out a way to play it. Anyway, there you go. I hope you're doing well. Uh, by the time you see this, I'll be either just finished CrackCon or be at CrackCon. Um, and hopefully won't be having too much of a headache on the Sunday. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Enjoy your games. And I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out. Mm -hmm.